Let's talk about how to deal with downloading multiple files. So remember in the last video, the, the video on how to do a single file, we specified here's the exact file that we want to. Well now we want to download many different files. So here's what I've done in the interim. Let me just, uh, this time I'll pick Internet Explorer here. Um, you can use any browser basically as an FTP browser. If you are just incidentally looking for a good FTP client, I'm a fan of FileZilla. That's just my favorite one. So our credentials, just in case you did not watch the last video, we're going to log into SS uh, to ftp.learnitfirst.com. Our username is SSIS158. That's the course ID here. And that's Learn It First is our password. So that's all I have to type in then is learn it first and I click on log on and here we just can see the subfolders here chapter 4 and I've added several files to chapter 4 so you can see the file names. Now let's take a look at a couple of things here. We've got obviously a group of related data you can see the orders information here that is a very common pattern that we see in ETL processes where you put some type of a timestamp on it uh, so we're going to talk about various scenarios we might want to download every text file not download the CSV and notice down here we don't want to get this guy here uh, oops, that didn't work out like I hoped it would. He's a CSV, so we might say I want every text file. Or we might say I want to get only those text files that start with orders. Or I might want to even be more specific and say I only want orders in the month of October 2009 that are also text files. So we're going to be able to do that. We're going to do so with wildcards. So if you're comfortable at the command line and you understand how command line wildcards work, then you're going to be comfortable here. Okay. So before we really go into it, let's just talk about the basic wildcards. And I'll switch to red uh, and use some text here. So in the FTP world, in the command prompt world, the asterisk means all. So I can match any character, really. That'd be a more preferable thing here. So something like um, if I said star dot txt means get all files that end in dot txt. So every file in a folder that has a txt extension, for example. If I said star dot star, that says get all files regardless of extension. So basically, you're going to, with the FTP task, return a set, a collection of files in a folder, and you're just determining which files you're going to work with with this wildcard. Now the question mark, and I'll switch over back to blue here for this one, the question mark says any single character. So if I did something like question mark dot txt, get all files that have a single letter or single character file name and end in .txt. So for example, um, s.txt would work or 9.txt would work because it's a single character .txt. Most of the time, however, you're going to use this in conjunction with like uh, orders 2009 question mark question mark dot txt. And that would, in our example above, have returned that set of four orders right there. Okay. So question marks and wildcards. That's what we're going to need to know when it comes to working with multiple files in the FTP task. So let's do this. Go ahead and leave here. Let's come back over here. I'm going to add a new project. Notice that I have made the previous video files01.dtsx, and so it's included in that zip file. I'm going to make this one files02. So let's just rename that, and I will include this one in the zip file as well. 
So now what we want to do, let's just start with the FTP task. And I'm going to make my connection. And it remembers my connection. Oh, no, it doesn't. I thought it would have remembered my connection. FTP.learnitfirst.com. Uh, SSIS 158. Remember the same credentials we use to log into the FTP on Internet Explorer, right? That's all it is. Uh, we'll allow it to re retry five times, wait 60 seconds in between. Under the file transfer, we want to receive files. And we want to put them, we'll just store them in the root. And kind of make my local path. Sorry, I'm typing in the wrong place. So again, as I know I said it in the last video, but just in case you didn't see that one, um, I'm doing this for demo purposes. In the real world, you have a very secure folder. You're downloading data. You want to lock that down to the proxy account or whichever account is actually executing the package. But I'm just doing this for demo purposes here. Uh, we'll overwrite the files if they exist. Let's just make sure they don't exist. They do. We'll delete them from, this is my local copy, right? So they're gone. Uh, so now the remote path, it will connect to the FTP. We choose chapter four. Now we do actually have to, when we're in here, we have to pick a file. So just pick something. It's not going to matter because you're going to overwrite it right here with your orders 2009-10 question mark question mark dot text. Okay. You got that? So now we're just simply filtering for only text files, .txt files, that are in the Chapter 4 directory with the question mark, question mark. Right. I say OK. And let's just run this and make sure that it's working right now. So we execute that. We can, shouldn't take it too long. Those are like 1K files a piece, if that. So it shouldn't take it very long. I have to hit refresh, and there they are. Okay. So pretty easy to download multiple files. You just have to know your wildcards. Okay. Now, I want to show you something about each of these files. 1,000, OK, three columns, order ID, customer ID total. Three columns, 1,000, 1,001, OK. That's 10, 11 has a 1 is the third digit, okay. 12 has a 2 as the third digit. I could have made that clearer, but... And 3 has a 3 as the third digit, okay. All the rest is really the same. But what we now want to do is we want to load all four of these files into a database. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this like ultra, ultra simple, okay. try to at least. We need to use the for each loop. So if you remember from chapter uh, from earlier in chapter four we talked about the for each and how we can loop through files in a folder. Well this is perfect. So let's come down here we drag it we double click on our for each loop we define our collection as a for each file and there's a bug in SSIS 2008 so we got to move off of it and move back to it to get this down here. Now here's the little gotcha that you have to worry about. You know, it defaults to the same folder we chose, the root, right? But notice right here that it has chosen a different file pattern. We don't want every file in the root of the C drive, do we? No, we only want to find the files that we've downloaded. Now, in the case where you have, you're uploading every file in the directory because you're not just using the C drive, then it may be fine to use that star dot star pattern. But we want to go with orders 2009 10 question mark question mark dot text. The, I'm sorry, the same pattern that we did for the FT for the download, right? So it's the exact same pattern. And we say awesome. Now let's take a variable. And we're going to make a new variable. We'll call it file name. And we'll say what this is saying right here. Don't worry so much about the variables. We're going to cover those in the next chapter in detail. But essentially, the name of the file will go into this variable. And we need that because we're going to grab a data flow task. 
and our data flow task is going to have a flat file source and our flat file source we're going to make a new connection to our data file and I'm going to grab one of these files right now and I'm going to use it as my configuration file so I'm going to use it to pick up the dummy data the basically so that when I click on the columns it can show me what the columns are I can choose what the data types are uh, I could say that the order ID for example is assigned integer uh, as is the customer ID and if you don't know what that is you know you can go to this preview you can see what these values are uh, you can deal with some types of conversions here uh, this is a currency DTCY here and I say okay and so that becomes my source and I want to now load that into a SQL Server destination if I seem to be going fast it's because I don't care that you know all this data flow task stuff yet we're gonna get to this believe me we're gonna talk about data types and conversions and all of that and it's really I'm looking at my little list right now it's only like five to ten videos later in this chapter so we're, we're definitely going to get there. Uh, but I'm just doing this to show you something. And I'm going to make a new connection to what well, pick your database that you want. Uh, I'm going to use the learnitfirst.com database. And I'm going to create a new table. And I'm going to call it orders. And notice that because I said that the types were integer signed integer signed integer and currency when we define the source that it auto detects those as int int and money okay and if you wanted to you could do things like make this the primary key and this is not going to allow nulls and neither is this one you could of course have this table pre-done right that could be done as well so if you want to look at the code that I've written right there that's all it is it's very very simple say okay my columns will automatically map up because the names are the same and I don't need to get too fancy here however how is it that I tell the flat file that I want to use the file that was just downloaded Okay, now we're getting into what we call dynamic packages. And that's what Chapter 5 is all about, using variables, using expressions, doing all of this stuff dynamically, downloading files. and do it. So close your eyes. I'm going to do some hard stuff here that's, that I'm not really going to explain. Uh, don't, don't even look. It's not cool. You don't want to see this. This is bad stuff. Um, really, really, stuff that you're going to see in Chapter 5 you don't want to see right now. So I'm talking a whole lot, so you're hopefully not paying attention. Um, did I not do this correctly? Oh, sorry. thought I double clicked on it there. Um, so, blah, 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 blah. Okay, hopefully my misdirection attempt worked and you didn't get all scared and freaked out. Don't worry about it, right? I'm going to totally show you all this stuff in Chapter 5. You're going to know it cold. Okay? I'm just trying to tie this into a real-world scenario so you can see how we use the FTP task in the real world. Now, coming over here, let's delete our source files. Okay, local. There's your create table syntax in case you, you wanted to take a look at it in SQL. I have saved it here so you can have it. And I'll just take a look. We've already created that, so it's empty, right? So let's do it. Oh, no. Don't want Stupid. We're downloading our FTP task right now see if it's there you go you can see them hitting right there and right now it's looping through and hey we didn't even have an error that uh, is a rarity uh, here um, but it looped through and it loaded every one of those files so you can see right here when we load this up remember the files uh, file on the 10th had a 0 as the third file on the 11th had a 1 as the third file on the 12th had a 2 and it loaded every file in the folder very cool. I saved this as files 02. Very simple. Um, we're going to go through this in detail. Don't you fret. I know it's probably frustrating for you to sit there and watch me 
well, why is he doing that? And what is validate external metadata? And why did he set that to false? I don't get it. This is, he's going too fast. I don't, I, this guy's terrible. <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know. But I think there's a structure here. And I think I, I don't want to scare you. At this point, you need to continue with the goal of chapter four, which is let's take a tour of what all the different things do. When we get to chapter five, there's going to be a set of things that every task can take advantage of called expressions and variables. And then we'll lock in and really get down to that. So I hope you get a good understanding of how the FTP task works. We'll revisit this in chapter six when we start and chapter five uh, as well, because we're going to have to be downloading files and doing all kinds of things. Now, next up, what I want to show you how to do is working with files and folders using the file system task. So the FTP task is for FTP servers. The file system is for working with network and local. So I'll see you in the next video.